Welcome to Mill Ruins Park. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Good. The public need to realize that history is everywhere. It's not just above ground in cool buildings. Um, it's not just in books, but it's also underground. And there are a lot of different ways to learn about our past. Um, you know, there's oral histories by talking to people. There are books by reading. There are looking at, looking at buildings. But there's also history under the ground and digging. And there's an incredible history down here in the milling district. Many of the remains are still here and intact. They're just grown over and they have grass on top of them. And to begin to teach these kids that, that there's more to history and give them a sense of place. You know, it, it's the folks that were here before that were running these mills that made the city what it is today and it, it, to, to sort of give them that, that perspective. All of these buildings used to be mills. These buildings used to stand right where they are digging right now. This is what we're going to be looking for. These were all down there. We're Parts going to be excavating. Place. The Cataract Mill was the first privately owned um, flour mill on the side of the river. It was built in 1859, operated until uh, 1923, and then I think was knocked down in 1928. So it was a pretty early um, mill. There were five mills on this site, uh, and they were all very, very early. It's an interesting site because it was knocked down, and nothing was really done with this site. It's, it's pretty much been left the way that it the way that it was. And so there's a really good chance that as we dig, we're going to find a lot of um, structural remains as well as a lot of artifacts. If you want to be able to start to get you digging right away, get those hands a little dirty, and maybe try to find some stuff. We just don't want to find a bunch of stuff and throw in a pile. We want to know where we found it. So that's what we're going to do. The reason why we're digging this is because we're trying to help them find out what was here a long time ago. Over there, is where um is where um the uh buildings were. We're outside right now where we're standing is where outside of it was. This is unique in what you're gonna do because you will become archaeologists working with real archaeologists. How many kids can say they've done that in their life at your age? Not many. And that group of kids is from Jenny Lind um, Community School in North Minneapolis and they'll be out here five times. We're digging for some, for the remains of, of the mills that used to be here. It's pretty exciting to be able to have the kids learn something about the Minneapolis history. And so we sat down with the people from the park and got an itinerary and we got the grant and we're here doing digs. So these two people will be with you digging. They are the archaeologists that are working with us to do this excavation. Can I get their attention? Hi. Hi. <laughs> You'll get to know them really well. You'll be, see them every week that you're out here. And this is the hole we're digging. Like there used to be a building here and we're supposed to, we're supposed to be looking for um, the parts from the building that used to be here. We're looking for artifacts and history to, um, so we can figure out how they used to live in the, back then. So when we found out we got the grant, we started presenting to the kids what archaeology is all about. So we've kind of incorporated a lot of the science and history um, and how things get covered up over time and how that helps us as we dig and we find it helps us link the past to the present, which can help um, lead us to the future. During the week until the end of school, we are doing school excavations where groups of school kids are coming out, um, working with archaeologists to excavate the site. It's really fun because they know a whole bunch that we don't know and now we're learning more. They were teaching them about archaeology, about city history. First, when they come onto the site, we give them an orientation, sort of a tour of what's here with the remains and what's underground, a little bit of the history of the area. We show them the tools of archaeology, how to do archaeology, and then they, they get to dig. There's there's an adult at, at every unit with them, um, and there's always an archaeologist on site, and they actually just get to excavate, um, just like archaeologists do. You know, we're going down in five centimeter levels and using trowels and screening all the soil. And this is, I think, their third week on the site. 
So they're getting, getting kind of good at this. I learned that when you're excavating with a trowel, you don't dig like this, you scrape. You have to go like this. You have to keep the shovel thing and bob down, and then you have to put them in the pan. We use this to measure what, how, how deep this is, and maybe to see how, how old it is, too. And we are looking for treasure and digging. And then this used to bring dirt into this. And we have gloves and brushes and a ruler to see how deep we're digging. What are we trying to find? Some artifacts so we can see how past life was and what they used. When we started digging out from our unit, we put it in the bucket, then we have to dump, dump, dump it out right here. Then after we dump it out, we have to do what Kai is doing, it's called sifting. We haven't shifted yet, this is just the first time today. Then after we sift, we try to find any artifacts that we find. And then if we can tell if they are real ladder artifacts, we can just put it in a bag that says Unit 3. We shift the dirt, and then after the dirt's all gone, the rocks are in there. We find different rocks that are from probably the building underneath and stuff. Archaeology is pretty cool because you can find things that you've never even known were there. Here it's a mill, so we can find a lot more stuff than if you just go into your backyard and dig. You might not find, you might just find dirt and grass and bugs. But here were some mills, so you actually do find some man-made things. We're finding artifacts that we didn't know that was in the building. So far, we found some cement. Mallory found a nail. And Tiana found a big, a big chunk of metal. And I found another chunk of metal glass, rusted out pieces of metal. And we found something sticking out of the ground and I don't think we know what it is yet. Concrete and bricks and all sorts of other things. We uncovered more of this metal beads. It's usually the case with archeology. span There's just a lot of mundane everyday sorts of things, bits of bottles and windows, bits of walls and foundations. We're finding um, lots of stuff like nails and glass, and something that looks like a cross. And we found a big piece of what we think is stairs right there. We found um, gold, glass, nails, um, clay. Finding cloth and a belt buckle, and my friend here, Dale, just found a rusty nail. A I mean, clip. paper clip. Yeah. I found like a piece of a straw or something like that. Right here, the brown, the black part over here might be a stairwell and the brown part over here might be the building. The last time we came here, we found a cigarette butt and like nails. And right now, we're just digging up a lot of dirt. We found a whole bunch of broken nails and concrete, glass, and we just found a pig bone. Right now, we, we've been finding something over there, but we can't get it out. Marble um, tiling and, um, and uh, ceramic water pipes and um, kind of thing that when you sit down and add it all up, it tells you about what was going on here, what kind of structures, what kind of activities, what people were up to, how these mills evolved and changed through time. This is in the shape of Minnesota. Oh yeah, it's turn it the other way. Though. There it is, that's yeah, Minnesota. Some things that you think are just plain nothing, they're not. It's that hands-on, tangible bit of information that they can actually go out and, and, and see. In the classroom, we don't always get an opportunity to do that. And here, instead of just looking at an artifact, now they're finding an artifact that links something to their knowledge that they've been studying or, and or will study later on down the road. You get to dig and you get to find stuff and you also get to 
work in a rectangle. And in school, you, you write and you don't dig and you don't have a rectangle. They've been very excited about what we've been doing here, all the things that they find. Uh, the kids are even excited about finding things like nails and, and uh, coal, pieces of coal that, that you would think that kids would think, oh, this is just a rock. And, but they are very excited about all these and how it relates to our history. There is always a little bit of surprise. Sometimes they get excited about worms. Sometimes they're excited when they see chunks of coal. You know, they're just, it depends on what comes up at that particular level. But I mean, I've seen kids get excited about breaking rocks open to actually, you know, appreciating a little bit of the methods that go into the archaeological dig. So it helps uh, get the, uh, bring real life to our curriculum. Why are you trying to do that? So when, if we find anything, we'll see if, how they used it and how it's different from stuff we use now. We found big pieces of paper. For scientists to find out how people lived a little, a long time ago, it's about history. In education now, I mean, we have to be able to have the ability to work outside the buildings. Um, fundings and everything else are so limited, and, and to have this ability to come in where they're working and helping us provide education for kids is great. And so to have that, that teamwork, because ultimately in society we have to have teamwork, and the kids are starting to understand that more. They've been working on the same units every week, and they are getting pretty far down. We actually had to end one unit and move it over. They get in here and they know how to do it now, so they come in, get right to work, spend the entire time in their rotation doing it, and they're experts at recording and taking notes. Well, we write about what we found and how far we dig. We found a lot of rocks. We found glass. We found, we found, and I also found a volcano rock. I have been enjoying watching the kids progress because they, are becoming archaeologists. They know how to do this stuff now, and they're learning the process in a very professional way. This is an I-beam. This is a piece of cloth. We're actually learning about what was here and how and what patience is all about. So we have to have patience so we can make sure that we don't miss anything that that is really important. We're using brushes to um, brush off all the stuff like this, all we have to do is go like that. And we're using a ruler to measure. It's really exciting because it's a lot of fun. And we get to come here every Friday. I think it's just a treat to see them make their progress and get what they're getting out of this. We found this pretty interesting thing, like part of a window and a part of a, a floor or a wall. It's um, about finding details and about the history and so we can find what, how they used to live back then. There's a lot of things you can learn about, like how some of these people used to live and how some of these people used to work. I've been surprised at how many different um, strata, how many different levels of fill we're getting. On a couple of these units, we've got seven different episodes of soil going down on top of the ground. Now, we know that the topmost one is just um, related to landscaping here for creating the park in the last few years. But if you think about each one of those layers underneath that is older, 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 and older. Um, and we're getting, we're getting back in time a little bit by the time we've gotten down through seven layers of fill. And they help us like learn figure a lot. Out, figure out, figure out, figure out learn. what we found and stuff. On industrial sites you typically find big chunks of, of metal and um, structural remains, things that were holding the building together, nails, glass, stuff like that. But you'll also find pieces of machinery in the really kind of large artifacts. It's kind of like a piece of rusted out metal that could have been part of a conveyor belt or it could have been part of a railroad track that had collapsed. And if you can like see a little bit right there, there's a little bit more of it that could have like came off of here or something. 
And we're trying our hardest to find out what it is. Yeah. Like, oh! <laughs> Today we pulled out the giant chunk of metal that's been sitting there for a couple of weeks. And when Mariah was digging under it, it is collapsed. She moved just in time. You run into a lot of natural enthusiasm, you know, you try to explain, you got to do archaeology slow and careful, and that works fine until something interesting turns up in the floor and then Everybody's instinct kicks in. They want to dig, you know, dig down, gum, get it out of there, and find out what it is. So. Oh. On the count of three. One, two, three. Oh, crap. Good job, team. But the goal is to, to hopefully figure out what they are and, um, and learn more about the site and the people that were here and the processes that were going on here. We are finding more stuff as we get deeper and deeper. You know, it was nice to have one group like this that has come back um, for separate trips, and you can see them learning a little bit more each time, understanding a little bit more what they're doing. And we're like kind of real archaeologic, archaeologic is. It's real archaeology. It's not something that we sort of put together for the kids. It's it's real archaeology, and they're they're helping us excavate. It gives us the opportunity to work outside our classroom and, and get to know many more people in the community, which gives us better resources in the long run. What I've really enjoyed is watching them um, tutor each other as they work. You know, somebody will get a little too excited and start gouging down, and the others will tell them, no, no, remember, we've got to dig flat, we've got to dig level and keep the floor even. And today was fun because we're getting down into some of the older, um, some of the older layers that have more art artifacts and, and more unfamiliar things. Do you think you want to do archaeology again after this? Yeah. I might be an archaeologist when I grow up. Or I might be a novelist, a teacher, a, a, um, a safari guide, or an archaeologist, or, or an agent. Somebody's an author's agent. Archaeology taught me about what has happened back in history at the mills. This is the most important part of education. Pen and paper testing is one thing, but knowledge that kids can grab from out here is so much more. We have a tendency of only getting one modality to our kids, and that's that pen and paper testing. This modality is where a lot of the learning needs to come, so it gives them that opportunity to work with their hands because they're keen aesthetic learners. And there's like the littlest things that you can find. Like, you can find like a baby, baby screw, like that's like maybe that long, if you're just paying attention. And it's really fun. Somebody can, should come out here and do it someday. It's kind of like a piece of a puzzle that you can like fit all together. We're just trying to like figure it out piece by piece. So eventually we can um, have like a little puzzle put all together. These are going in the museum. So make sure when you go in the museum, go see them. You can look at them and you know that we found these. We'll clean all this up. Um, we will um, sort everything out, make a catalog that lists everything that we've got, describes it, gives us counts and weights. And that's the information that we'll use to analyze the site to try to get dates for different um, layers of sediment, different parts of the site. And eventually it'll just be bagged up in um, archival materials and should end up in museum storage in some place so that um, anybody else who's interested in the site in the future could come and look back at the same material. Well, it's always pretty sad when you only work with kids for about four weeks and you just start to get attached to them and they have to go, especially when they get really excited about your project. Bye, I love you more. Bye, -bye everybody. Bye. I feel kind of, kind of sad. Because we had a lot of fun while we were finding lots of artifacts. I feel kind of like sad because I still want to dig and like find more stuff. Me too. I'm not happy about that. Why not? Because I want to do it more. And we're just starting to uncover some really interesting things in our dig. And then they, now they have to leave. So now they, they're contagious. They got me excited. And I want to sit here and dig the rest of the day. <laughs>
This has been a fabulous project and I'm glad we got to work with these kids. They seem very excited to be here. I asked them what they liked best and they seem to like all of it. I asked them what they didn't like and they said that they went back to school too early in the day even though it's the end of their school day when they get back to school. So it was great to see the same kids over and over again. And they enjoyed coming back to their same unit. They would dig in the same spot and see how much deeper and how much progress was made. They became experts at what they were doing. So it's great to work with the kids.